Joining us now, he is a freelance writer and professional wrestling fan. Uh, he wrote this great piece in The Atlantic, Pro Wrestling is Fake, But It's Race Problem Isn't. Dion Barry, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really happy to be on. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this, Dion. Um, I would just like to say that Michael, before you came on, was joking how, being that I'm a big professional wrestling fan, I was going to defend pro wrestling. But as people who may not be wrestling fans may not know, this is actually something that even even within wrestling circles has been discussed for, for a pretty long time, actually. And I think you really laid out the case here quite perfectly, Dion, and that's why I wanted to have you on. And uh, let's get right to it. Uh, there's actually been recent events that uh, we should bring up, but I think we should save that for the end of the uh, the discussion. So let's get to uh, let's let's actually bring up how let's start off by talking about how um I'm pretty sure the WWE launched an angle after reading this piece. I, I there's rumors they're <laughs> dropping it, but I'm almost I'm 99% sure that the WWE started an angle with three of their wrestlers, and your piece is directly responsible for it. Um, I would hope so. I mean, uh, you know, to explain it, uh, three of the wrestlers I mentioned in the piece, three of the black wrestlers I mentioned in the piece, uh, Biggie Langston, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, you know, formed this group that was, they were kind of, you know, on the edge of being like, you know, like the black freedom fighters, you know, and talking about how they're going to, you know, not be held down anymore and they're going to go out and take what they want. And, you know, when I saw that come together on screen, I could not stop laughing. Like, I thought it was the most hilarious thing. Not, not hilarious as in it's bad or I didn't like the angle, I, I want, but hilarious I want to just, as in... I want to just add, for people who aren't familiar with wrestling, this happened maybe a week or two after your piece came out. Yes, it was not... It wasn't the Raw after my piece came out, but it was the Raw directly after that next one. Okay, so it was two weeks after. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I was hoping that, you know, putting the piece and publishing it in a mainstream source would kind of, you know, WWE loves the mainstream attention and they really pay attention to mainstream stuff. So I thought maybe putting the piece in the Atlantic would, you know, cause a shift or something like that. But I was not expecting, you know, that to happen so quickly and so, you know, evidently right out of the box like that. And I mean, for people who, who again, I'm trying to frame this for people who aren't familiar with wrestling before we get too deep in, because as a fellow wrestling fan, we can go right down the, the kayfabe <laughs> hole here. But, um, yeah. uh, you know, wrestling has this, this stigma of being, you know, for, for rednecks or southern white people. But, I mean, mm-hmm. maybe in the early years, the early 1900s, you know, maybe even the 1950s, 1980s, you can even argue, was predominantly white people watching wrestling. But, I mean, there, there definitely was a shift in the 90s with the Monday Night Wars, I would say, at the very least, where, where wrestling became a lot less white in terms of its, its fan base. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go to a wrestling show now, its, it's demographics are all over the place. They have a oh, ver- very strong African-American and Latino fan base. Uh, I mean, the major wrestling countries are United States, Mexico, Japan. Uh, I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's a big thing, and it's it's not a far from a predominantly white thing now. Yeah, and um, you know, internationally, you know, wrestling is huge. Wrestling has the sort of global appeal that uh, sports like the NFL and the NBA they would love to have the type of international appeal that professional wrestling has. Yes, and you know, like you said, in the '90s was really when. Uh, things started to diversify with that audience, the same way it diversified with, again, the NFL's audience. But what you see with the NFL is that they embraced that new audience. Mm-hmm. You know, they embraced the fact that it was a diverse audience now, and more and more you see them even embracing women and, you know, other, you know, minorities. Um, but with wrestling, it's remained very much, despite the fact that the audience is getting, the, getting more diverse, the uh, performers in the ring have remained very much uh, white. It's a very, very, it's a very, very white, you know, spectrum of athletes. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Uh, let's let's actually get to some of these the, the some of these uh, African American professional wrestlers who have who have broke through and really should have. I mean, you, one of the major point in your piece is how there's never been uh, 
a African American WWE World Champion. And mm-hmm. for again, for for people who aren't very familiar with professional wrestling, this is to uh, th- let's let's separate the World Heavyweight Championship, which is okay. the old WCW title, which is a defunct organization. It was once owned by uh, by Ted Turner, and then in 2000, uh, the WWE purchased it. It was the number one WWE competition when this happened. WWE basically uh, signified itself. Uh, 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 basically, you know, it, it said to it said to everyone in the industry that they are the number one, and there's no one that's come mm-hmm. close since. Um, but this World Heavyweight Title was kept around, and yeah. it's always been known that you know the WWE tries to push it as there's the WWE Title, which is their uh, lineage uh, title. That's that's been through the years, the WWE title, and then there's the World Heavyweight Title, which I just mentioned is the old WCW title, and they always promoted it as you know them being on equal footing. But everyone knows they weren't because the World Heavyweight yeah. Title was the B Show SmackDown's uh, uh, World Title, and it very rarely, if ever, uh, was uh, saved for the main event, which was usually the WWE's title. Yeah. You know, it was whatever uh, title was on the B show was the B title. I mean, that's just the way it's always been. Mm-hmm. And and you point out how there's been African American wrestlers who held the world heavyweight title, but never mm-hmm. broke through to win the WWE title. Which basically, to, to really, I'm really trying to figure out how to say this for non wrestling fans. But it basically, means you're the face of the company. You're gonna, you're gonna. Yeah. I mean. Yes, wrestling's predetermined. Uh, they know who's going to win in advance. But these wrestlers work to get to these different positions. And yeah, it's when- like uh, what Mick Foley said in his book. He, when he talked about when he won the world title, he said, no, I didn't win the world title in the same way the Denver Broncos got and win the Super Bowl. But, you know, by being chosen to hold that title, it's my industry saying, you are the person that we want to be the face of this company that is the top company in this industry. So... You know, you, we want you to be the representative of the entire industry. You're that good. You're that good of a performer that we want you as the face. Exactly, yes. And with that comes uh, more opportunities in, you know, in other forms of entertainment, uh, more money, merchandise sales. Uh, all around, it's better for that, 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 that wrestler, that, that actor, whatever you want to consider them as a non-wrestling mm-hmm. fan, as someone as a non-wrestling fan. And there's never been an African-American WWE champion. And you, yeah. you, you, let's talk about some of the guys in your piece who you bring up. And, and I want you to go into it because you really get to this one. And t- to me, let's start with this because this has always been the most insane one in my mind. Uh, Booker T. He is without a doubt, mm-hmm. in my view, probably the uh, most well-known, famous African-American uh, professional wrestler, uh, at least in the modern era. Uh, mm-hmm. let, let's get into what happened to him and, and let's give a little bit of his history and... This racist angle they they played, which for no reason, I mean it's it, it may I'm I'm speechless just thinking about it. It's always bothered me. Let's get into this. Go ahead, Dion. Okay, so uh, Booker T, you know, very very talented wrestler, held the uh, WCW championship five times in another company. So when he comes over to uh, WWE, he wasn't treated very well at the beginning, but you know he starts to build up momentum. He's a fan favorite. The fans really enjoy him. Um, heading into WrestleMania, he's uh, you know booked in a match with Triple H for the world title, and you know you, you know Triple H was playing the sort of franchise character where you want him to lose, and he's been so good for so long, you just want Triple H to lose to an underdog. So Booker T, you can't really say Booker T is necessarily an underdog Triple H because Booker T at that point was a five-time world champion. It happened in another company, but he was a five-time world champion. So. The angle they played up was Triple H walked out to the ring one night and he said, you know, people like you, Booker T, you don't get to be world champion. Your job is to do a little dance for us. Your job is to entertain people like me. And this is really, you know, he didn't come directly out and say, you're black, I'm white, therefore I'm better than you. But that's sort of what everybody knew it was all about. And even, you know, the next week, I think, you know, Booker T was giving a promo about how he's overcome all these odds in his, you know, in his career, and he's going to overcome this one as well. And Ric Flair comes out and says, listen, I know you're talking about overcoming odds, but you're not Tiger Woods. You're not Michael Jordan. You know, like specifically mentioning black athletes. So, you know, following that, Triple H ends up beating Booker T. Now, this is like kind of 
opposite of wrestling logic. Wrestling logic says, typically, you know, with an angle like that, the good guy's supposed to win. You know, I have person like as a wrestling fan, you know, you learn to just sort of, you know, get get over some, you know, certain aspects that might seem problematic because if they're the bad guy, and it's kind of okay for them to do these awful things, but if that bad guy then wins, you know, what is that saying about that bad guy? You know, Booker T, you know, he didn't come back and eventually beat Triple H for the title. Triple H said that people like you can't beat people like me, as in a black person could not beat me, a white person with nice hair from Connecticut. And Triple H ended up being right. So, you know, what does that say about that story, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it was definitely a bizarre storyline and all that. And also, I mean, again... Uh, w- w- I'm, 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 I'm actually I'm gonna ask you something because I think I'm 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 breaking uh, uh, in terms of wrestling history here. Was this was this one of those angles? Because there there is one in that time era, that that era right there, that period, the early two thousands. Was the was the N word dropped in this one, or was that a different one where Vince said? Um, that was I I want to say that was later because Vince said the N word to John Cena. I remember. So that. this yes. was before this was before okay. John Cena, you know, had. Be- you know, I'd won his first world title. But that's another thing, you know, Vince McMahon comes out on television, says the N-word, and just plays it off as a joke. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it was a very, very odd thing. And wrestling fans, you know, a lot of them would say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe Vince would do this. But if it's a black person who says, oh, my gosh, I can't believe Vince would do this, that's racist. You know, suddenly mm-hmm. wrestling fans are, you know, more you know, more prone to defend that. No, 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 that's not racism. That's not racism. That's nothing racist about that. It's just the character he's playing. Yeah, I mean, with with the Booker thing, too, again, it's, it's just to get back to that because I didn't want to move from that so quickly. He, mm. he, he without a doubt, is probably, uh, like I mentioned going into it, the, the biggest African-American star in, the, in, in this wrestling era. I mean, he was, when, mm-hmm. when, when the WWE purchased WCW, they only brought a certain amount of WCW stars in to represent WCW. And mm-hmm. they made Booker the face of WCW. And, yeah. and th- there was absolutely no reason, besides what you just mentioned, for him to be, t- to be brought down like that as a character. He was, could have been one of the WWE's biggest stars. And they you know, the question is, did Booker T ever really recover from that? You know, Booker T won the B-Show championship, but that was after he switched characters to this, yes. you know, weird half-black, half-British king who would, you know, speak and in ghetto slang right after he spoke in, like, this, you know, fancy British vernacular. I, I, I actually love that gimmick because, let's get into this, mm-hmm. it's it's one of the few professional wrestling characters where where a black person was allowed to have more than one dimension. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, and, and having Charmelle in there, too, was the queen. You know, she was, you know, hilarious. She was fantastic, yes. And, and, and it's interesting that that is what they had to do. Finally, look, let's give this black person more than just him being a black guy. Let's give him mm-hmm. a character. And that's what actually got him at the highest point in his career, the, the, the second biggest... Uh, name in the WWE at the time, I, I guess you could argue, because he was the world heavyweight champion as opposed to the face yeah. of the company, the WWE champion. But let's get. And to- then, I mean, you would wonder, like, would they, you know, would something like that happen to a white wrestler? Like, you don't expect Daniel Bryan to have to put on a crown and a cape in order to get his shot at the world title. You know, he just deserves a shot, and he, you know, he does deserve a shot. He's the most talented wrestler in the world. But, um, you know, it's interesting the kind of things that are expected of black performers that are not expected of white performers. Let's get to the, let's get to the, the gimmick aspect, because I want, I want to talk about that, the characters of wrestling. And, and you mm-hmm. lay out how, how, I believe there was three, three things that, they, uh, that, that the black uh, wrestlers in the WWE portray. And it's, it's, if it's mm-hmm. not one of those three, I mean, you're not going to see it. Uh, yeah. so, so if you could just go through that, I, th- I think that was really well, 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 well done. Well, I said that uh, black wrestlers can, either they're going to have some type of gimmick based on their race, um, they're not going to have any gimmick at all, or they're just going to have like a kind of generic, weird, natural athlete gimmick. You know, which goes into... Um, you know, when you look at a guy like CM Punk or Daniel Bryan, you know, you think of those guys as technicians. You know, they're technical wrestlers. But then with a lot of the black wrestlers, they're played up as just natural athletes. You know, it's the same way that 
uh, going back to the NFL. It's the same way they present a lot of the black athletes in the NFL. You look at people like uh, Cam Newton or RG3, or and, and they say that those guys are, you know, just, just naturally gifted athletes, but then you find a guy like Andy Luck, and they call him a traditional quarterback, a throwback quarterback, and those kinds of things. So, um, you know, for black wrestlers, it's really difficult to get outside of that box, and I don't think... I wasn't able to think of a black wrestler who wasn't, you know, included into one of those boxes with the exception of um, Alicia Fox, you know, of all people somehow avoided it. It's for, for again for uh, non wrestling fans. Alicia Fox is basically uh, a WWE women's wrestler. They call them divas, which is another conversation <laughs> completely. That they're women wrestlers. Completely different podcast there. Yeah, well, we'll definitely get to that one eventually. Uh, <laughs> let's, but um, but they they basically ha- didn't have her in any major gimmick on TV. Nothing, maybe thrown out there every now and then. And then all of a sudden she comes out and she's acting crazy, which again is another conversation for another day that a, a, a woman has to act crazy to get attention but um mm-hmm. but but yeah i mean it's bizarre and i don't think and, and again like we mentioned booker did have this king booker gimmick where he did have extra layers but i think alicia mm-hmm. fox might be the only one who they ever put out there without saying she's this and oh by the way she's black yeah um i didn't understand the alicia fox gimmick i mean it's not as if they put her out there with that gimmick so she could be promoted and pushed and eventually win the women's title you know, she was just kind of there to keep, you know, the champion busy while they waited for um, another wrestler, AJ point. Lee, to come yeah. back so she could feud with the champion. That's a good point. Um, so uh, let's get to some of these other names you bring up really quickly uh, before we, 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 uh, we end it here. Um, I'm, actually, let's get to – let's talk about Ron Simmons really quickly. He was, okay. uh, he was a big WCW star. He, um, before that even, he had a, a football career. He was well-known name in sports. Um he he was WCW World Heavyweight Champion again WCW the the uh, no, known as the you know the the Hicks of professional wrestling because they were based in the south mm-hmm. and then Ted Turner bought them uh but again the, even they were more progressive in this aspect Ron Simmons was their world champion and then he comes Ron to Ron Simmons was actually the first African American world champion in the history of the sport Yes yes and um and and he comes to WWE and they they give him the name Farouk and they don't use his real name, Ron Simmons, which, yes, they do do that for white people, too. But if someone comes in with name value, they would never do that. Brock Lesnar didn't yeah. have to change his name. You know, Kurt Angle didn't have to change his name. Uh, mm-hmm. But Ron Simmons comes in and they name him Farouk. And I, I personally, again, I'm, I'm saying this is a white person, and I would like to hear your, your, your take on this. I'm sure there were uh, certainly areas where they... they, they, they uh, they crossed the line here, but I personally don't have a problem with the nation of domination looking mm. back, looking back at it because of what it was able to do for people uh, in the nation of domination and propel mm. them to, 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 to bigger things where I think they weren't stuck in this whole, you know, I'm a black guy scenario uh, that they, that they, they, they basically stuck them with. But, uh, but g- talk about, talk about what they did with Ron Simmons as Farouk and with the nation of domination. Well, with the Nation of Domination, it was a group of uh, black wrestlers and uh, a white wrestler, Owen Hart, for some reason. Uh, so it was this group, and they were sort of, you know, this black supremacist, really playing up on something that was, you know, very current to that time there in the in the 90s, and, you know, playing up this black supremacist uh, gimmick. And eventually, you know, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson joins that group, too, and he's uh, Samoan, and his father is African-Canadian. And with that, as they, as they started to sort of push this black supremacist group, um, everyone's character kind of started to shift to, you know, to a bit, you know, cooler, flashier type black characters. You know, Mark Henry, um, who I mentioned in my piece. Mark Henry became sexual chocolate from there, and uh, Kama Mustafa, who he shifted to be the godfather, which was this, you know, huggy bear inspired pimp. Yeah, with uh-huh. the feather in his cap, and he came down with the prostitutes to the ring with him. So the na- uh, like like you said, I agree. That, you know, the nation itself, you know, wasn't kind of wasn't anything I had a problem with, and I would love to see that gimmick be uh, revisited in the future. You know, something more subtle. 
uh, something you know a bit better written. But I, I, you know, I mean, because like it does, it does, it does speak to a very real issue. I mean, I mean, that's yes. what, that that's one of the things that people who aren't professional wrestling fans might not realize that that a lot of times wrestling is is a. Uh, a, st- a pop culture staple in terms of talking about actual real issues, whether they be social or political. I mean, they might. I mean, certainly they get it wrong a lot of the times. But mm-hmm. I mean, but I mean, they do have a very uh, important place in pop culture's overall. Um, I guess you can say influence on yeah. how the general public views these issues. Yeah, and absolutely, and you know, when it comes to professional wrestling. It's like you said, it's the microcosm of what's going on in the real world. So it's almost, you know, and that's been one of WWE's defenses about a lot of this stuff is that, you know, oh, you can't, you know, blame us for putting this on television. All we're doing is putting something on TV that's already on TV. We're just kind of fictionalizing it. And they did that with them um, when, you know, the Russian Rusev and Lana kind of subtly made reference to the plane, the Malaysian plane getting shot down. And they did that on a pay-per-view a few weeks ago. Yes. Now, WWE kind of said, oh, no, they're just characters. You know, they're just talking about current events. You know, it's not something we're trying to make a joke out of. And so, you know, when you see what, you know, the contemporary um, standards are for a company like WWE, we're talking multi-million dollar media conglomerate. Imagine if CNN, had never had an African American correspondent. You know, imagine if you know any of these other companies had just never had an African American, you know, publicly represent their company. And that's sort of when I look at WWE and I say, now I, you know, I understand for non wrestling fans, they might say, you know, who cares? This is fake. You know, no one's winning it or losing it either way. But when it comes to WWE, you have to wonder how is it possible that they have not chosen one African American person to promote as the face of their company in almost 60 years of existence. I, I th- you know, and I want to, I want to, I, I think that's perfect way to, to close up that section of, of this conversation. I just want to get to one last thing before we wrap it up. And that is for people who are listening and saying, you know, it's, it's storylines, it's on television, they're characters, you know, it's all make believe they act, whatever. Um, you know, these things actually are, are almost, uh, mirror images actually of of what actually goes on in in the real world the professional wrestling Mm -hmm. business where people who play these characters are actually affected and um and i I mean we could get into the how the how how other races are treated hispanic uh asian uh but but there but let's get to the real world world aspects of this actually where where just recently um you know a story popped up where one of the WWE's big, uh, st- well, he was one of their biggest stars. He's been floundering a bit mm-hmm. since, but Alberto Del Rio is a big Mexican wrestling star. He came to WWE, became a big, he came champion really quickly. I believe in like seven months. Um, mm-hmm. They pushed him. Water Royal Rumble and Money in the Bank and yep. all this stuff. Just, yep. It was hugely pushed. And they, they pushed him big time because W realizes there's a market for there's a Latino market, and they've been really trying to find big Latino stars as their basically their old Latino star, Rey Mysterio, is starting to wind down his career. And this Alberto Del Rio uh, wrestler was a big star. He, he definitely was a name in the company. And this past week, they released him online. And it, it's, mm-hmm. the weird thing was, usually when they release professional wrestlers, they wish them, the, the, it's, it's become like a, a joke in wrestling circles, but the, <laughs> the last line is, we wish them well in their future endeavors. And... It's weird and bizarre that this is the first guy I think they didn't wish well in his future endeavors, and then yeah. after and they and then after that, they they put out two tweets saying that you know he was released for unprofessional conduct, and whatever happened is on him and him alone. And you know, and this never happens. Like the WWE Twitter would never reference the firing of something. They would they normally never do that. Put it on the website. Yeah, they put on the website, not even as a top story, as one of the side news items, and they wait for it to a week or two to pass, and then it goes away, and you don't hear about it anymore. These people just mm-hmm. disappear from your television set. And there's a rumor going around, and, and, and people, you know, there's like four or five real wrestling journalists out there who actually do have insider sources, who, who, who do know these things. And there's a very substantial rumor out there that one of the WWE employees, because remember now, this is, again, this is another conversation for, for another day, Wrestlers are mm-hmm. independent contractors, but a WWE employee, so again, not an independent contractor, apparently said something racist, 
about the, Alberto Del Rio. And when he was confront when Alberto Del Rio confronted him about it, he laughed it off, and then apparently Alberto Del Rio slapped him. That's apparently what mm-hmm. led to him being fired. But I mean, Del Rio gets fired, and then you hear nothing else though. There's no in, in wrestling. There's a very real race problem, even behind the scenes, with how these people mm-hmm. are apparently treated, and the guy who's the victim in the races of racism is the one who gets punished. And you know that is indicative of WWE's entire attitude surrounding race. Is that if this is a company where you know a publicly traded company where an employee can make a racist remark to another employee. And that the employee who made the racist remark, you know, keeps his job, and it's the victim of that is, of that you know statement that ends up fired, fired very aggressively, more aggressively than anyone I've ever seen fired by WWE. You know, if that's the type of situation going on backstage, you know, how can you possibly look at their output of people of color as you know a lack of stars, and say, oh, it's just coincidence? It's not coincidence. There's a problem in the company. There's a problem at the executive level. You know, I don't, I don't want to say anyone in the company is just racist and just hates people of color, but there's clearly a race problem in WWE and in professional wrestling, and this is very indicative of it. Dion Barry, I, I hope that the other rumor is true, that this Alberto Del Rio thing is a complete work, but at the same time, I'm actually worried... If he comes, if he comes back on uh, Raw, then I'm just going <laughs> to... I feel like I wasted a lot of tweets on this. I also feel like we'll both have... Po- you know, what, what, what <laughs> do we just talk about here? No, but I, it, it's definitely something to look into, and uh, I, I'm very glad you came on to talk about this. Uh, thanks for ha- coming on today. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on.